1871 to January 13, 1948 and Wilbur April 16, 1867 to May 13, 1912 were two American aviation pioneers generally credited 3, 4, 5 with inventing, building and flying the world's first successful motor operated airplane they made the first controlled sustained flight of a powered heavier than air aircraft with the right flyer on december 17 1903 four miles south of kitty hawk north carolina others were also the first to invent aircraft controls that made fixed wing powered flight possible In 1904-1905, the Wright brothers developed their flying machine to make longer running and more aerodynamic flight with the Wright Flyer II, followed by the first truly practical fixed-wing aircraft, the Wright Flyer III. The brothers' breakthrough was their creation of of a three axis control system which enabled the pilot to steer the aircraft effectively and to maintain its equilibrium 6 7 8 9 this method remains standard on fixed wing aircraft of all kinds 10 11 p 183 from the beginning of their aeronautical work Wilbur and Orville focused on developing a reliable method of pilot control as the key to solving the flying problem. This approach differed significantly from other experimenters of the time who put more emphasis on developing powerful engines. 12 using a small home built wind tunnel. The rides also collected more accurate data than any before enabling them to design more efficient wings and propellers 11 p 156 13 p 228 their first us patent did not claim invention of a flying machine but rather a system of aerodynamic control that manipulated a flying machine's surfaces the brothers gained the mechanical skills essential to their success by working for years in the Dayton Ohio based shop with printing presses bicycles motors and other machinery their work in bicycles in particular influenced their belief that an unstable vehicle such as a flying machine could be controlled and balanced with practice 13 p169 from 1900 until their first powered flight in late 1903 they conducted extensive glider tests that also developed their skills as pilots their shop employee charlie taylor became an important part of the team building their first airplane engine in close collaboration with the brothers the right brothers status as inventors of the airplane has been subject to counter claims by various parties much controversy persists over the many competing claims of early aviators edward roach historian of the Dayton Aviation Heritage National Historical Park argues that there were excellent self-taught engineers who could run a small company but they did not have the business skills or temperament to dominate the growing aviation industry hello friends I am Rajeshri Nair Jiyar of class 7. I am Jaisri Nair Jiyar of class 5. Today we are going to do an experiment. The name of the experiment is Why this is happening. For this we need two spoons, glass, 
salt and some water. First, take a glass and pour some water to it. Now, take some salt, take a spoon and add a spoon of salt to the water. Take another spoon and mix it. Mix it until it dissolves completely. Now it is completely dissolved. Now Add a spoon of salt and mix it. Now it also dissolved completely. Now add few spoons to it and mix it. Now we can see that some salt remain here. It is because every dissolving substance or dissolving solution have a fixed quantity. This fixed quantity is known as saturated solution. When no more salt dissolve at a particular temperature, then the solution at the temperature is known as saturated solution. Then, this is an example of saturated solution. I think it is helpful for you. Thank you. Have a nice day. Blaise Pascal was a mathematician who was born on June 19, 1623 in Sermon-Ferrand, France. Pascal invented the first digital calculator to help his father with his work collecting taxes. He worked on it for three years between 1642 and 1645. The device called the Pascal line resembled a mechanical calculator of the 1940s. This almost certainly makes Pascal the second person to invent a mechanical calculator. In 1646, Pascal began a series of experiments on atmospheric pressure. By 1647, he had proved that a vacuum existed. In August of 1648, Pascal observed that the pressure of the atmosphere decreases with the height and deduced that a vacuum existed above the atmosphere. In October 1647, Pascal wrote new experiments concerning vacuums which lead to a dispute with number of scientists.
from 1653 pascal worked on mathematics and physics writing treatises on equilibrium of liquids in 1653 in which he explains pascal's law of pressure the pascal's principle said that when there is an increase in the pressure at any point of a confined fluid there is an equal increase at every other point in a container pascal also studied conic sections and produced important theorems in projective geometry he also studied the pascal's triangle making many new mathematical observations this is a triangle where each number is the sum of the two directly above it the triangle was used to prove pascal's identity this is a useful theorem dealing with binomial coefficient In 1654 Pascal began corresponding with mathematician Pierre de Fermat he conducted experiments with dice and discovered that there was a fixed likelihood of a particular outcome this was the beginning of the field of probability theory Pascal's final work was on cycloid the curve traced by a point on the circumference of a rolling circle which he studied in 1658 Blaise Pascal died of a stomach tumor on 19 August Namaskaram ende pere abhirami pili yan alapura stv girls high school le 9th class vidyarthini aanu vaayinde vellathinde rendu savisheshanagal ore samayam tirichariyan sahayikkuna oru parikshanam aanu yan indore kaanikkunnathu ഇതിനായി വേണ്ട സാധനങ്ങൾ ഒരു ഒഴിഞ്ഞ കുപ്പി ഒരു ബലൂൺ പിന്നെ കുറച്ച് വെള്ളം ബലൂണിൽ വെള്ളം നിറച്ച ശേഷം ബോട്ടിലുമായി ഇതിനെ ഇതുപോലെ ബന്ധിപ്പിക്കുക ഇപ്പോൾ ഈ ബലൂണിൽ വെള്ളവും ബോട്ടിൽ വായുവും ഉണ്ട് ഇപ്പോൾ ഞാൻ ഈ ബലൂൺ മുകളിലേക്ക് ഉയർത്തി ഈ വെള്ളം ബോട്ടിലേക്ക് വീഴാൻ അനുവദിക്കുകയാണ് അപ്പോൾ വീർത്തിരിക്കുന്ന ബലൂണിൽ ഉണ്ടാകുന്ന മാറ്റം എന്താണെന്ന് നമുക്ക് നോക്കാം ബലൂണിലെ വെള്ളം പൂർണമായും ബോട്ടിലേക്ക് വീണ് കഴിഞ്ഞിരിക്കുന്നു എന്നാൽ നോക്കൂ ബലൂണിലെ വെള്ളം നഷ്ടപ്പെട്ടിട്ടും ബലൂൺ വീർത്ത് തന്നെ ഇരിക്കുന്നു എന്താണ് ഇതിന് കാരണം വെള്ളം ബോട്ടിലേക്ക് ഒഴുകി വന്നപ്പോൾ ബോട്ടിലിനുള്ളിലെ വായുവിന് സ്ഥിതി ചെയ്യാൻ സ്ഥലം മതിയാകാതെ വന്നു അപ്പോൾ ആ വായു മുകളിലേക്ക് സഞ്ചരിച്ചു അത് ബലൂണിൽ നിറഞ്ഞു അതുകൊണ്ടാണ് ബലൂൺ വീർത്ത് തന്നെ നിൽക്കുന്നത് ഈ പരീക്ഷണത്തിൽ നിന്നും രണ്ട് കാര്യങ്ങൾ മനസ്സിലാക്കാം ഒന്ന് വായുവിനായാലും വെള്ളത്തിനായാലും സ്ഥിതി ചെയ്യാൻ സ്ഥലം ആവശ്യമാണ് രണ്ട് വായുവിനായാലും വെള്ളത്തിനായാലും ആകൃതിയില്ല അത് ഉൾക്കൊള്ളുന്ന പാത്രത്തിന്റെ ആകൃതി സ്വീകരിക്കുന്നു എല്ലാവർക്കും പരീക്ഷണം ഇഷ്ടമായെന്ന് വിശ്വസിക്കുന്നു നന്ദി നമസ്കാരം